I'm going to talk about watermarking today. The, the good thing about watermarking is that you can sort of claim a picture as your own. But I think the best way to watermark is to do it in a way that's, that's quite personal so that it's got a nice touch that you've added to your picture. And you add it in a way that doesn't distract from the picture itself. When people look at the full picture, they don't really see your watermark straight away. You know, it's, it's quite hidden. But it's in a place where if someone tried to steal your picture, your watermark would still be there. I don't want to make it sound like there's this big conspiracy and everyone's out there to steal your pictures, but no matter what picture you make, it will always be unique to you. So it's important that you can keep that uniqueness, you know, that picture as your own. And um, unfortunately, there are people out there who will claim that something that isn't theirs is. So it's nice to have your watermark on there for your own recognition as well as for your own protection, really, of your images. So anyway, I like to use my Fat Dragon watermark because that's what a lot of my videos and my images are related to. So let's go ahead and make this watermark. So I've opened up my Fat Dragon image. What we want to do, the first thing, we want to make a duplicate of this image. So on the Layers tab, if we just right click and duplicate layer, so press OK. And we're going to delete this background layer here. So we just right click and delete layer. There are quicker ways of doing this, but I don't want to complicate it. So we're going to right click for now. Yeah, yes. What we want to do is we want to remove all of this white from behind the dragon because we don't want a big square in the corner of the image. It's nice to have a logo. So we're going to make it so that you just see the dragon and the text and not this square background behind it. So we're going to go to the select tool here. This is a quick selection tool. You can press W to get to it via the keyboard but we're going to do it by clicking and we're just going to click the background behind the dragon and it's a smart selection tool occasionally it gets it wrong and you do have to sort of unselect or select extra of what you want because it won't see everything every time but at the moment I'm just selecting all the bits of white that the selection tool missed on its way around and you can see some of these letters didn't get selected. That's just the way that the selection tool worked around it. So what we can to do, if we press Alt, you'll see up in this top corner here, there's the selection tool. One has a plus next to it, one has a minus. When we press Alt, it selects the minus one. If we let go, it's back on plus. We want to do minus because we want to take away the selection of these letters that weren't meant to be selected. So just by holding down Alt and clicking it's taking off the selection from the letters. So all of the white now in this image is selected. So if we press Control and X, it's the cut, and we basically cut away that whole background. So now all we've got is the silhouette of this dragon. And I've just made him a bit smaller. And now I'm going to press Control. It's already selected. So I'm going to press Control c for copy, Control n for new, so it's a new document. So we're going to press OK for a new image, and Control v for paste. So we've pasted that back into the new image, and you'll see it fits quite nicely within the new image. So you'll see that it automatically put a background in here. We want to remove that because we don't want a background. So we're just going to drag that down to the bin there. You could right click and delete the layer. So now we're back to the same stage as we were on the original watermark here. So we're going to close this because we don't need it anymore. Now I don't want to save it. And we're on our watermark. Now it's very, very rare that you'll want to put a watermark that's coloured, personally. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, maybe people like to do that, but I don't. So we're going to go to Image, Mode and Grayscale. And what that will do is it will take away all the colour. This box that's just popped up has said... Um, do we want to discard all of the colour information as we do? So we're going to click discard. And now it's turned it to black and white. Uh, one other thing I like to do, you don't have to do this, but I like to, is to go to filter, stylize, and emboss. What this does is you can see it makes it look like it's been stamped into the image. I quite like it if you look at like metal presses where they stamp in a logo into metal items, that sort of thing. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save that as my watermark. So file, save as. I'm just going to do it to my desktop for now. So that's dragon watermark. So 
So now we've got our watermark ready and open, we're going to press Ctrl A for selecting all and Ctrl C for copy. And now I'm going to go into one of my other images and press Ctrl V for paste. And what that does is it pastes it onto a new layer. Now if I click the selection arrow up the top left hand here, I'm just going to move him down. He's obviously way too big, he's way too distracting at the moment. So we're going to press Ctrl T for transform and that allows me to resize the image and hold on to shift to keep the proportions right and just make him a lot smaller so he just goes down into the corner there and let go just click the tick up here and we've selected that size and everything and the positioning and we've agreed that that's where we want it so now what we do is we go to the opacity of the layer with the dragon on and we're going to turn it pretty far down because it's quite a dark layer you don't need it to be too bright because it will show up quite easily so on this one maybe I'll put it on 9% so that is very very low opacity but as I say you don't want it to distract from your image at 9% it looks quite good you can see it if you're looking for it but it's not too bright if you had it on 81% that's put a whole new colour into your image and it's it's just not really the look you want to go for so sort of 12 down to 9 or 8 that sort of spectrum but personally this is the way that I watermark my images and if you were not sure how to watermark your images or if you wanted to see how other people do it this is how I watermark I hope that makes sense I hope you are able to watermark your images to your taste thanks for watching